Hey everyone, Mike Miller with the Herald Times. Columnist Jeremy Price coming to you. Uh, look, we're back at Assembly Hall. Um, a real game. A real game. Uh, a real game that's not in Hawaii. A real game that's not in yeah. Hawaii. Hawaii was fun. Sorry, I don't, mean to rub that in. I don't mean to rub that in. It was it was just fine, though. It was just fine. So was the uh, the final result tonight. That was a terrible transition. <laughs> Indiana wins 100-78. to Beats uh, UMass Lowell. Uh, UMass Lowell in their fourth year transitioning from the Division II level. They uh, are still one more year away from uh, actually qualifying or being eligible for the postseason. But um, uh, obviously just a you know one of these November tune-ups that you see littered across the college basketball landscape this time of year. Uh, for Indiana, there were moments of brilliance, I thought. Uh, also moments of, frankly, November basketball. Um, uh, but uh, I do think that um, even in some of those lulls that they had, I think they were at least mindful of some of the shortcomings that they had and um, there, there, I think there was some attention paid to that, especially defensively, and, and I think rebounding too. Those were two of the areas I think kind of sticking out uh, in not so uh, you know positive ways. Um, but um, I, I still think with this team being as it's uh, you know middle of November, uh, this team is just wildly athletic and talented, and uh, I think the upside certainly is high uh, once they do shore up some of those areas. Yeah, really, outside of the the, the very beginning of the game, that sluggishness, sluggishness sort of. That probably lingered longer than at any, any other point. But once you got past that, uh, this team again showed the capacity that when they did struggle, then they showed the ability to fix, to correct whatever it was and, and turn things the opposite direction, which at times made for a bit of a roller coaster effect in this game. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think that ability to correct is big and sort of speaks to what you just mentioned, the, the potential for this team. And, and I think that's the thing is as impressive as the win over Kansas was, as impressive as they were in flashes tonight, there is still such a huge upside for what this team could yet be is is what's really intriguing i think they could be scary good i mean there's just there, we saw it again tonight just kind of you know just a, a wild approach to lineups and rotations early i think once again uh, by the time Deron Davis checked in around the 10 minute mark he was the 10th player to mm-hmm. actually check in that's kind of what we well, exactly what it's we saw against Kansas man either. no it's not at all not at all not at all and uh, he actually played a little bit with Thomas Bryant too we'll get in that we'll get to that in just a minute um, but they, they deployed a lot of different things tonight. We even saw a uh, bit of a full court press at uh, at a time late in the uh, the second half. It, it worked pretty well too. It gave gave uh, UMass Lowell some trouble uh, getting up the floor. Tom Crean's talked about uh, going down that path at, at different points this season. Obviously, I don't think that they're fully installed in what they want to actually do with that yet. But uh, actually, it sounded like that kind of just happened organically. Like they just kind of saw an opportunity to uh, to, to turn up the pressure just a little bit. But um, even with some of the lapses defensively, we're seeing. Um, just you know, p- potential as far as uh, the different uh, you know formations they can attack with, and also just personnel. Again, I mean, Bri- having Bryant and uh, Deron Davis on the floor together, I think late in the first half was really uh, something that really spurred them, uh, you know, through some of the lulls that they experienced early in this game. Yeah, a lot of different lineups, uh, a lot of different interesting lineups. Like you yeah. mentioned, obviously Davis and Bryant playing together, uh, very short term, but I you was actually very successful. I think. Uh, I think the number I saw was plus 10 during the about two and a half, three minutes that those two were on the floor together. Um, had some other interesting lineups. There, there was kind of a three forward lineup where you had uh, OG, Jawan, and Freddie McSwain as like the, the three forwards with a couple of guards. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you had some other lineups where you had three, maybe four guards uh, in at the same time and, and not necessarily the ones you would think, not, not like the starting lineup where you had New Kirk, Blackman, and Johnson, but you, you know, you had Curtis Jones, Devontae Green. Um, just kind of a, a mixture of, of guys in there so a lot of interesting combinations that this team's capable of but uh, you talk about the full court pressure I think that's something we see as a change up eventually this season but I also liked uh, what Tom Crean said afterwards which was basically that the emphasis for this team is getting better in the half court defensively and that was evident tonight uh, probably no no point more so than the beginning of the second half I gave up points on five consecutive possessions to UMass Lowell and then turned around and got 10 consecutive stops in a row yeah there was a, a 15, 15-0 run, I guess, a good teetering toward the middle part of that second half. Uh, that was a period during which uh, I think UMass Lowell went scoreless for about six minutes. So, you know, obviously it was a little, you know, it, it kind of shifted between good and bad, as you said, a little bit of roller coaster at times in this one. But we certainly saw, uh, you know, that the, the potential is certainly there to 
uh, perhaps get some more sustainable, uh, decent play for longer stretches of period, longer stretches of time. Um, from an individual perspective, scoring-wise, James Blackman once again led the way. Uh, 23 points tonight. Uh, also led Indiana with like 26 against uh, Kansas a couple nights ago. Uh, OG Ananobi shows up with uh, 15 points. Rob Johnson, 16 points. Juwan Morgan, another steady Juwan Morgan-esque night with 7 points, 7 boards. He was just kind of all all over the place, uh, filling him a variety of roles again uh, tonight. Um, one thing that I thought was interesting, and, and again, totally, probably totally expected, was the <laughs> fact that uh, Tom Cree mentioned after the game that uh, it was roughly 40% of the possessions tonight featured at least two freshmen on the floor. So once again, we got a, a good look at um, really the, the, the three uh, that are going to factor in at, at points this year, uh, Curtis Jones, Devontae Green, and uh, Deron Davis. Yeah, and once again, uh, like we've been talking about, you know, Curtis Jones had the big game against Kansas last week, comes back here fairly quiet, uh, unspectacular night. And, and that's not really going to be out of the norm for these freshmen. I think you're going to see one pop up and have a good game here and one pop up and have a good game there, and then they'll just kind of disappear again. But that's okay with this team because this team isn't counting on any of these freshmen to provide anything sustainable. They're just looking for contributions, whatever form those take, whether it's a balanced contribution, whether it comes from one particular one on one night, one particular one on another night. It's just fitting those roles and, and finding those complementary pieces that those, these freshmen can bring. And then you've got other guys that are still kind of figuring out what they can bring. I mean, Jawan Morgan, as as much as we already, I think, brag on him a little bit and, and are impressed with what he brings to the table, I, you kind of remind yourself that he's playing significantly more minutes, playing a significantly different role than he did at any time last year, and he's doing it healthy this year, which he didn't really do at any time last year. So what he's capable of and where he ultimately gets by the time we get to January, February is another one of those intriguing things. And, uh, you know, you mentioned OG had a, a little, had a good scoring night. And it's really not so much the points that impressed me, but what I'm looking for are different ways that OG scores. And one of the most impressive was he had a pump fake, put the ball on the floor, one dribble, pull up 16 footer, yep. nothing but net. Those are the kind of things, the diversity that OG can bring to his game. If he can do that, that just makes this team all the more dangerous offensively. To go back to Juwan Morgan momentarily, I, I probably talk way too much about Juwan Morgan, but I, to be quite frank about it, I, yeah, he is my favorite uh, favorite player to watch on this team just through his versatility and, and uh, abilities to fill so many different things. One thing I really liked from Morgan tonight was um, really, obviously won't find it in the box score, but he was just really vocal. He was really uh, pulling guys along, especially Freddie McSwain. Freddie McSwain was, um, you, you can tell that there's, there's some ground he still has to cover to get to be a reliable guy off the bench, uh, even as an energy guy, even as a guy who kind of gives you a different uh, a different pace. Um, you know, there were many times when Juwan Morgan would kind of point, you know, you got to be over here, go over there, move over a little bit, or just pulling him along all night. You know, Freddie kind of struggled tonight. Um, obviously, you know, the shot is still a, a major work in progress for him, the jump shot, um, and, and really just positioning and, and understanding uh, where he needs to be to be successful on this team. But, again, I, what I really liked from Juwan Morgan tonight was just his coaching on the court, really pulling him aside in huddles, um, you know, during inbounds situation. I mean, he was just in his ear just saying, hey, go over there, do this, do that. Um, that That is exactly the kind of presence I think this team, any good team needs, and especially a team that doesn't have a senior. Yeah, and it's another one of those aspects of this team that's definitely a work in progress is where's the leadership going to come from? What form is that going to take? What guys are going to step up into what roles leadership-wise? And I think it's quickly apparent to us that Jawan Morgan is one of those guys that's stepping into that leadership role. I mean, press conference tonight, you had discussions about what he was telling Freddie McSwain and what he was telling Deron Davis. And uh, we've talked to him in the past about sort of that mentorship role with some of the younger players. So he's obviously stepping into that. Another scene tonight we had Thomas Bryant uh, you know directing traffic uh, rather animatedly which you wrote about uh, tonight as, as well early in the second half and and then you've got Colin Hartman who seems to spend far more time on his feet coaching guys up than he does sitting on the bench uh, these days even though he's unable to play so you're getting that from a lot of different places and guys are sort of finding their voice and what what they can do how they can lead what they know and who will listen and and all those kind of different things and, and that's another Yet, yet another aspect of a work in progress with this team. Yeah, that, even that that's a little further along than I even thought it might be two mm -hmm. games into the season. I wasn't sure that really anyone would have a voice, but already we've seen a, a couple, two or three, even you know, including Colin Hartman, who's very vocal on the bench, uh, you know, raise their voice or not even raise their voice, just provide a voice when, it, right. when there needs to be one. So, um, again, a lot to like with this team. I'm, I'm very impressed so far. Obviously, there are some things that must be cleaned up. It's 
middle of December, middle of November, and uh, sh certainly uh, ample time to do so. Indiana is back here on Saturday night, Saturday night, excuse me, 7 o'clock, hosting Liberty. Um, we'll be here? Or, yeah, you'll, no, you no, won't be here. I won't we'll be, be here. You'll be you'll, on the desk. Yes. Just you. I'll be here. Andy Graham will be up at uh, Michigan covering football. Busy weekend. Uh, it's that busy time of year, but uh, stick with us. We'll have you covered. So with that, have a good night.